What's up, what's up, what's up, friends, family, and fans? It's your boy Stone, and as always, you know I'm rocking with... Yep, Johnny Vaughn. Hello, people. What's going on? No, I don't know why I pause and let you say your name. Why I don't? Well, I remember why because you used to always do it. You just say my name, and then one time you said, "You know, I don't know why you don't ever let you introduce yourself." And I said, "It would make me feel special." So then I, I, I and it, yeah, and then so I did it. So then you just kept pausing. But I mean, you could get back to introducing me. Make me feel special again. That's fine. It, okay. Yeah, we should because it feels so weird. And I'm with. Yeah, and I could, yeah, but okay. yeah, you, if you just said, then I could be like. And we can just get through that and, and be done with it. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, what's up, everybody? I hope you had a great week. It has been. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> one day, no, you know what it is? One day we're going to write a joint book about all the behind the scenes intricacies of this stuff. Uh, and 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 that'll, that'll, then everybody can just find out how nonsensical a lot of nonsense gets. <laughs> Man, oh man! So y'all feel me? We all we all in this together. Mm-hmm. So I can't say it's, it's a Corona. Actually, Corona actually plays a little bit of a role in all of this. To be honest with you, yeah, a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit, but it's been a heck of a week. But you know what, though, we get to spend time with you and talk to you, and honestly, my spirits go up. So I appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all so much. Absolutely. Um, before we get into our topic for today, Johnny, is there anything, any uh, any special show and tell, mo- not show and tell, but like moments, you know, highlights, whatever you want to call it. Highlights. Just just from life in general, like stuff? Or uh, so something interesting, a fun fact. Give us a fun fact. Why don't we share a fun fact from this week <laughs> that, uh, that, that our listeners and subscribers otherwise would never know? I got nothing, dude. We're gonna have to put this on the end and let that mull over for a second. I'm I have I'm a fun sh- fact. Struggling. What you got? <laughs> so I, you know, updated my wardrobe. And if you know me, I really am kind of just a sweatpants or jeans t-shirt kind of guy. Okay. Um John, you know, when I buy some stuff, I'll buy a couple swag pieces, but I realized that I need to get some more, some more, some more gear or whatever. So I went and I bought I haven't bought a pair of Levi's in a minute. I was like, okay. I'm just, if I want some just blue jeans, right? And I got them. And because of coronavirus, you're not supposed to be able to try on stuff. Right. So I was like, I ain't buying these without trying them on. You know what I mean? So finally, we snuck into this one little dressing room, tried them on, and it seemed like okay. But then when I got home, and the next morning, I put them on. Net huggers. <laughs> I mean, bro. I was like, how do you remember them be like this in the store? Yeah, I mean, just freaking acorns. Just, oh, I'm just, oh. <laughs> guys, I'm like, man, I'm pulling down the front of my shirt all day. Like, Needless to say, those are going back, right? <laughs> this is not healthy. Well, it's funny you should mention that. And everything, I try, I try, I'm not perfect. I try to find a lesson or I try to find something <laughs> that makes me better or to grow. Pro okay. Trump experience, if you will. I say this needs to be my motivation to lose some weight, (laughs) (laughs) which I have been doing, but then I totally hit this brick wall and I haven't fought through it. Admittedly, I'm going to say that. So I'm going to use these jeans as an opportunity to get some of this freaking fat off me. All Mm. right. Stone's new theme song, Genuine's In Those Jeans Until He Gets the Weight Off. (laughs) Right. Right. So we got to bring them down from nut huggers to maybe nut massagers. That I can handle. Okay. I I had a jean situation myself. I haven't worn a pair of jeans through the whole coronavirus lockdown thing. So that's since like March. I've been Uh just rocking sweatpants and shorts. So I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, when I went to work for my last air shift, you know, I'm in the studio for five hours when I'm on the air. So right. I'm, I'm in there and I decided to wear my favorite jeans because I haven't put them on since March. And I mean, kind of like you, they were great when I was at the house. And about two hours into the show, I was like, yo, these are not comfortable, dude. Like, what's going on? And I always keep a pair of shorts with me. So I changed my shorts on. So when I pull the jeans off, like, dude, my thighs and my knees were sweating in those jeans. Wow. So wow. Uh, I'm a little chunky on the, you know, I've been eating snacks sure. just sure. like everybody else. Sure. Sure, Haagen-Dazs mint chip ice cream. Exactly. So, yeah. So, my, I, I, we're both in the same boat when it comes to that. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. We, we get digress. It. We definitely digress on that one. But anyway, so, but it will come in because this Halloween, I committed that I'm going to be a cowboy <clears throat> for Halloween. 
Not like that. the New York cowboy, right? Like you gonna like full on. Like a cowboy. Like a friend of mine, she got me watching Yellowstone, which is actually a really good series. Actually, I'm okay. enjoying it. Um, and I'm actually learning some life lessons on that. That probably should have been our topic today, to be honest with you. But life lessons um, from Yellowstone. Okay. From Yellowstone, seriously. But um, yeah. But I saw it with the jeans. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll rock these. Because honestly, with a plaid shirt, cowboy hat, some boots, if I went up to freaking like. Hall County, Forsyth County, Ella J. <laughs> with you the nut huggers too. That'll, that'll work. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Some, some people might change their mind. Like, no, they're not that bad after all. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I'm just trying to bring them together. I'm trying to bring the sides together. Taking one for the team. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to get myself hurt. So... <clears throat> What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what you guys are willing to do to succeed. Seriously. Yeah. And, and we, I just throw that topic out there. But in the middle of this whole virus thing, and like I said, they try to find an opportunity in every situation. Um, what are you willing to do to succeed? Like you can either complain about the situation we're in mm-hmm. or you can try to find a way to make it work to your benefit. But And there are people that are out there doing that or at least trying to do that. But when that... There's one thing about being excited about the idea of being something. So, for example, we have a lot of people out there that are excited at the idea of being a superstar, a star singer, or they're mm-hmm. excited at the idea of being a, a Grammy-winning producer or whatever. They love the idea, and they're committed all day. But then when it comes time to do that thing, suddenly that excitement drifts off, and then we have inconsistencies, and yeah. you're not putting So that's why we're asking, like, what is it that you're willing to do? to succeed you know when you watch the hit producer and stuff like that they walk across that stage but you know or even the athletes when they're when they're getting like the you know the super bowl trophy or whatever nba finals trophy whatever it is but do we truly understand the trade-off of that thing Uh, i was just talking johnny about some investments with some people where esports is concerned right are you into esports at all oh yeah yeah so yeah. I'm looking at really like before I kind of peaked it, but I, I honestly am going to go ahead and and I'll probably start with ETFs just mm-hmm. to get a piece of a few of them. But if y'all are listening to me right now, seriously, look into esports. Like it's not a matter of if that blows up to be huge. It's already big. It's already huge. Like, yeah. But when it gets to the whole common knowledge, it's, huge. When it becomes going mainstream, to be it's going. It is. It's going to change. I mean, once yep. once Las Vegas started getting involved in it. it it was a problem. So yeah, yeah I've, so I've, I've had my it, eyes on it for about three or four years now. Yeah. Read about it, learn about it. It is going to be the next huge thing. So mm-hmm. my whole point in saying all that is I, when you look at that and like there was a kid and when we were down in Orlando during that conference that we used to do, mm-hmm. <clears throat> they had a gaming co- convention down there. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there. I was like, man, I love game. I said, but you know, I used to always get in trouble. I'll be down there on my game for like four hours, six hours, this and that. And like, what are you doing? You need to do this. Blah, 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 blah. But th- this kid, he was 16 years old. And-, and we were talking with his mom. And his mom said that past year, he had just, he made a- over $100,000 gaming. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> but there were trade offs that he had to make in order sure. to become that good to earn six figures. And that trade off was he didn't hang out. He barely hung out with friends mm-hmm. at all. He would eat dinners, if you will, and stuff in front of the game. He would actually take breaks to do his homework and then go back to the game. Like, he just stayed on that game. So he was talking about the things on his thumbs, how he would get little sores and this stuff. That was stuff. And these yeah. might not seem big deals, but the bottom line is there were trade offs and uncomfortable trade offs. You know, you got grown men that are professional gamers too with families but do you yeah. not think please believe their girlfriend or their wives were in their ear when they were starting off thinking that they were deadbeats and being childish and being kiddish and all this kind of crap and, and they had to bear through all of that stuff because they knew what they were working towards now they're bringing in two and three hundred thousand dollars a year wife ain't complaining no more oh sure <laughs> when you can buy red so, bottoms they don't talk that much no more they, they, everything gets quiet when you can actually pay cash for red bottoms <laughs> right. but these are the trade-offs that you have to think about when you want to be successful. And again, we try to keep that short. We know that you have to work hard. We know we might go to bed late. Yeah. We know it might cost some money. Those trade-offs we know about and can accept. 
But what about those trade-offs where your, your wife or your kids or your husband, they kind of start feeling a little neglected? That's when they got to go. If they ain't yeah, for the dream, they got to get out. <laughs> but these are real trade-offs. <laughs> but these people don't reach those levels by accident. No, like, again, uncommon results require uncommon effort. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think I can say that phrase hard enough because we just take that word uncommon, just, oh, yeah, I know what that means. No, you don't. You, you're using your Bill Clinton hand right there, so that means you meant it. I, oh, well, yeah, I'm doing this. You know, see, I'm watching too much politics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to do that hand gestures. I mean, <laughs> but anyway, that's the whole thing. You know, the part of building your dream, right? Yeah. The, what is the root word of that word building? It's... Build. Build, yeah. That's where you take the cue, Johnny. You jump in like I was know, I was gonna let you get right to the edge of the cliff and, and then <laughs> give it to you. I might next time I'll let you fall off it. And I'm like, hey, it was oh. it was Bill Stone. <laughs> By the time we get to our hundredth episode, that time is gonna be like bam, 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 no, bam, bam, bam. I, I knew it, but you gotta remember too, we're on Zoom too. So sometimes what you're saying is a little bit delayed on, uh, on my response. So I've actually started building in some all right, is stone still going because you freeze sometimes on my end when I'm doing it. <sighs> And we've we've ended up like I'll end up saying something on top. So I, I'm trying to give it space to make sure it's, it's, we're not stomping on it. So that's that's All what right. that I, was. I agree. And, and until my microphone comes in, which you guys I have ordered and it is on its way. So Stone, is, it's, Stone it's, is building. He's taking I'm, steps. There you go. There you go. How about I'm that. Building. There you go. <laughs> But I also know how crappy I sound when I talk over you. I've heard it, so I'm trying not to do that as well. But look, but go ahead and bounce in on that, man. Like, what are you? Yeah, well, I, th I think you pretty much cover all of the points because we, we've, we've talked about this in, in some aspect or another in the past. It's a common thread that we, we definitely have to. It's one of those things you have to remind people of because it's real easy to get complacent on it. But one of the things that I've been focusing on primarily, especially through what we're going on now, is, is being able to, to analyze a scenario and adjust my thought process on what I'm willing to do. Because a lot of people will set that this is, this is as far as I'm willing to go or I'm willing to do anything. And whenever you say that, that's always a bold faced lie. Like nobody's ever willing to do anything. You've got right. limits. You definitely have limits. Like they may be in the stratosphere compared to others, but someone has them. So a lot of people don't take the time is what I'm finding to actually figure out what those limits are and then to figure out how much wiggle room they have within those limits. Because coming up into this year, before all of this COVID stuff happened, I had actually said, I'm, I'm going to start throttling back on this aspect of my business because in life, I want something else and this is hindering that. So I'm no longer willing to do this right. to support my life. So I started making those adjustments and that was a huge part of my life that I started to cut out because it was one of the streams where a lot of my revenue was coming from. Right. And a lot of it had to do with stress, um, not liking the people I was dealing with, and just for my personal mental health. So I created that barrier. And I said, I'm not willing to go this far for success anymore. If it requires me to sacrifice, you know, my morals for one thing, to deal with a right. scenario just to be successful, I'm not doing that. However, <laughs> when we get four months into COVID, and I'm like, all right. The stuff that was working is it's not there now. I may have to go right. back to that thing I was cutting out. Right. All right. Am I willing to do certain? Now I have to really analyze that. It's not so much. Can, can I do it? Absolutely. But I have to mentally get myself fortified to be able to step in that situation to be able to accept whatever experience comes with the sacrifice that goes into being successful. Because what you're willing to do is such a generic, it's just, a, it's a generic question to ask. But when you get to the specifics of what that what is, are you willing to sacrifice your relationship? Are you willing to be divorced and, and, and not have a family anymore? Are you willing to cut off your family because they're hindering the situation? Are you willing to step out and leave your nice cushy job where you were guaranteed X amount of income? To, those that what, when you start breaking it down, you really have to sit with yourself and say, okay, it's not so much can I do it? Because nine times out of 10, if you focus on it, you can, you can do it. But that willingness to do it, like will you still be you? when you do that are you like because we always say in order to do the next thing you have to change who you are that change you have to become that person you have to turn into or are you going to be okay looking at that person i guess you use the word you use the word sacrifice and what people don't understand is 
sacrifice isn't sacrifice unless it hurts or is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's really not a sacrifice. You know, right. it really isn't. And we always talk about the elite and, you know, you want to be elite until you do the elite do. And I wish I had an acronym for that because I. Oh, it's uh, coming. I know, I know you've been working on one. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. I, when you were talking, I was just thinking that we should do. Uh, you know what? I'm a, this, every, if you elite is in order to be elite is everyone. La, everything, everything likable is the enemy. That makes sense. What do I mean by that? Likeable meaning comfort, the things you want, the thing, you know what I mean? Like the, the, com the creature comforts, right? So everything, if, I wish it was a keet, E-C-I-T-E, -E, it would make sense. Everything comfortable <laughs> is the enemy. But we're going to say likable. Everything likable is the enemy. So that would mean sleep. That would mean just hanging out. That would yeah. mean just partying. That would mean just doing whatever things you want to do, all those likable things. Mm -hmm. They're the enemy of your success. Actually, dude, that makes a ton of sense. It, can it, I just, it does. Can I, a, can I get a, can I, can I get some love on the freestyle site? Uh, it was, uh, that's a B minus for Stone. You've done better. <laughs> but I mean, I, you know, it was okay for on the spot. Off the top of the rip though. Like I didn't think you, about that. You've done some genius acronyms off the top. Well, I was like, you playing that. Like, you was like, no. Okay. I was like, well, if, okay. Right. That one was decent. That was, but I'm see, the only reason I say it's decent is because I think it, and again, this is, it's, it's that, that surface level thing. And surface level to oh. getting to being elite, it, you can't be, we, what we're talking about right now, you can't be surface level. You got to go above that. So, you know, it, it's it's beyond just being uncomfortable at that point. It's it's are you willing to be ostracized? Are you willing to be outcast? Are you willing Thank to be you. exiled? Like that's that's where I'm going with it. Good point. And you know what? You just did everything we're talking. You you're not letting me settle. You're not grading me on the curve with that. No like, no bells on this one. <laughs> uh, you're right. And I'll take that. Matter of fact, we're gonna we're gonna bump that uh that quote that uh that acronym down to a C plus. How about that? Not even a I'm, B minus. That's a C plus. <laughs> I'm there with you. See, and he's on the honor system. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, but you guys get our point. So you, you just can't underestimate that. Matter of fact, Johnny and I were just talking before I came on. Uh, I have some things going on with the studio that, that are just, that are extremely just stressful right now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, super stressful. And then Johnny had a situation with his property stuff that you guys, is, you wouldn't understand how stressful that is. And mm -hmm. so we got on here and we're like, <laughs> we're like zombies. We're like, <laughs> what's the Louis like, man? It's like, oh, right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm brain dead. I'm brain dead. And I, but I was like, you know what though? I said, this has, these are, these are not just important, but these are essential mm -hmm. aspects of our story. So when we get that 34, $35 million deal from Amazon right. for podcast on Audible, mm -hmm. We have to be able to tell these stories of where we were brain, brain dead, but we still came with it with the podcast yep. where maybe our, our wives complained that we, we didn't go to dinner. We were giving up all this crap because we were spending too much time on this podcast because it was blowing up. We have to have those stories. Absolutely. In order to get to the level that we want to tr get. And it. trust me, I'm hearing that too. <laughs> yeah. like I'm, so it, I'm it hearing it. With, it comes with it almost to the point where you almost have to go after it having those stories this yeah. turnkey success crap it's not real no like let me take it back very, very seldomly can it be actuated into reality of something just being turnkey because what turnkey really is just means that somebody else did the work before you got to it that's all that means exactly, exactly. So, and whether it was the same whatever you had to do to get there you have to do to keep it to up. stay there exactly yep. and when I mean, we usually use it in a relationship whatever you got to do to get her you got to do the keeper. Keeper, exactly. You know? and the same thing with success. Like whatever, if you put no grind in it, you don't have that grind in you to maintain it. Exactly. So, and we, we see that all the time, <laughs> especially in our, in our industry. One hit wonders are the number one things. If you research them, you find out how much time they spend in the studio, how much material and content they actually have, how big is the actual catalog. Most times, more than not, catalog is almost non-existent. But you can definitely find those one, two, three hits that got, you know, yeah. Well, seven million the, downloads but that's the thing the grind wasn't there the work wasn't there they didn't have that experience so when it was necessary to go into that mode they didn't have that gear and that's that's why you saw so many people from like the voice and stuff like that fall off 
Yeah. You understand? Because the success was given, the, the professional band was given to him, the audience was given to him, the big stage was given to him, the television network was given to them, the wardrobe was given to them, the going out on promotion to tour was given to them. So everything they would have otherwise learned, the tough skin they would have developed, the tenacity and perseverance that would have grown in trying to get those things for themselves, those things were never developed. So now they, they blow up, they had millions of people that like them for the show. Now they're not on the show. Right. All of a sudden, no one's really feeling them. They're not booking and they're selling what they thought they might sell. Yeah. Well, you don't know how to maintain and keep that because you never exactly. develop those wings. And, in then, and it, I mean, going exactly to what we're talking about, when that exact scenario happens, they're in the prime situation to reevaluate. Like I was saying, okay, now I figured out that I don't have what was doing that. What am I willing to do at this point to either recreate or get back to? And a lot of people fold when you have to actually ask that question. Like when you realize, okay, it wasn't all just me. I was being propped up. What am I willing to do now to get back up? Most people fold over on that, man. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm guilty of that myself. I've had some situations where I'm not going to say I, I got into a position that I did deserve to be. I deserved to be there, but it came a little easier than it probably should have. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time for me to make a decision to maintain that level of power that I had at the time, I folded, man. I was like, yeah, yeah. the stuff that, cause, and, and, and I still accept it to this day because what I would have had to do to stay in that situation, I, this Johnny wouldn't have liked that Johnny if he would have did the stuff required for it. So it is, right. man, you, you, you have to figure out what that is. Like, what is it that you have to do to do it? And what is it that needs to be done? And then are you capable within yourself on a physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual level to go through what is required. Because if right. you're not, it's gonna break down in, in any way. So yeah. you're looking and at failure like, by either not starting or failure by, by failing to continue. And I think the mentality we want you guys to get is just to be honest with yourself. Be real with yourself. You know, if it, if, if just know that, look, I'm gonna just put it like this. Your, 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 your statement to yourself should be, this is what I want. Now, first question, how uncommon is that goal, right? Because the more mm -hmm. successful it is, the more uncommon it is, right? Say, this is what I want. And once you assess how uncommon it is, go ahead and just tell yourself, it is going to suck getting there. That's not me being negative. That's not putting out bad energy and bad juju, none of that crap. It's you being real with yourself and knowing that, hey, I'm going into this gunfight. Maybe I shouldn't take my Swiss Army knife. Maybe I should go ahead and just get me a Glock. And get me a gun. Because you know what- Why you had to say, say Glock? Oh. I don't know much wanted, about guns, so don't worry you about You're one of them. <laughs> I, I don't know what them is, but- that's a Glock. That's a Glock fanboy joke. I'm I'm not yeah, a Glock fan, but I'm not anti Glock. But I personally don't own one. But Glock fanboys do get on my nerves. That's all. Bro, I if you ask me right now, what's upstairs? I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> well, that's I not know. good. You should go I find out. Go, I know you go chick, chick, chick. Safety off. Mm. <laughs> that's all I know. You should I definitely go find out. Take it I out. Practice a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Dave Chappelle just two nights ago. I just learned the difference between duck shot or bird shot and buck shot. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> no, I didn't know you pepper them before you blow them away. <laughs> I did not know. Well, wait, this is a perfect learning moment for Stone. So Stone. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you live in a very nice neighborhood, and this may not be an everyday occurrence. However, sometimes your home or your family may be at risk, and you may need to defend or protect them. Now, Stone, yes. is it responsible for you not to know what's upstairs? You know what it's going to take to, to protect that family. What are you willing to do to become proficient? So that I you know <laughs> that what is upstairs has enough stuff in it <laughs> you first if it don't stop you it pisses you off really bad but it slows you down enough for me to send another reminder into you and if that still doesn't work i still know that there's four more to send another reminder into you now if i can't do what i gotta do in between those six reminders that's my fault <laughs> that's my fault <laughs> so i don't have to know the name brand I don't. Have, I just know that it works. I know how to work it, <laughs> and I'm good. Well, 
Teaching moment and example made. Stone has set his threshold of what he is willing to do. Could he do more? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Should I'm he do gonna... more? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but but is, what, got... is what he doing sufficient? Maybe. <laughs> well, granted, this is a bit of a weighty analogy you're using because we're I'm talking just... about human life. You shouldn't have said Glock. <laughs> and brain, brains and guts being all over my foyer. So it's a little bit, it's not your everyday occurrence. <laughs> well, we're, we're, hey, but we were literally just talking about non-everyday successes. That's what we're talking about. So that's why, that's why I rolled with that one. But, well, and, here's, well, here's the thing. The goal was to deter you from messing with my family. So that was the goal. So did I, would I hit the goal Yes, I do. And okay. I hit the goal. Now, if your thing was never to mess with my family or any other family again in this life or the next, then sure, I need to up some things. <laughs> <laughs> so, but right now, the goal is just not mess with my family. <laughs> goal achieved. <laughs> there is goal achieved. There it is. But anyway, say it. Go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, no, that's that's it. I was just going to say like that's that that just paints it out that they really are. We, and I, I think we've said this in some way too that there's levels to it. You, I know I've said this. You may be okay with just being pro. You right, might yeah. not want to be all pro or all star or yeah. defensive player of the year or MVP. You the, might yeah. be cool with just making it to the league. And that's great because right. they get paid too. Right. But certain people have that dog in them where that's not enough. Right. And if you have that itch at all, you owe it to yourself to figure out if you're willing to go as far as necessary to, to right. make it to whatever that next level above pro is. And that's what I meant. That's what I meant by look in the mirror, ask yourself, well, what is my goal? So mm -hmm. is my goal just to make it to the NFL, which is lofty as it is, or is my goal to be the best in the NFL? Right. Two totally different standards, mm -hmm. you know? And something to think about with this whole law of attraction thing, which everyone's so big in, is the law, listen to this for a second. The law of attraction works for people with traction. And I'm going to say that again. The law of attraction only works for people with traction. Stone, what do you mean? Well, if I sit there and say, uh, I am going to be the best music publisher in the game. I'm speaking it. I create some confessions and, and mantras on it. I'm listening to the 528 hertz frequency tones. I'm oh, meditating. Um, oh, I'm, I'm attracting, bro. I'm attracting. I'm spending hours a day attracting. And I don't go out there and find one producer. I don't find one writer. I don't go out and buy any copyright. I don't care how much I'm attracting. It ain't coming to me because I have no traction for that to come to. You can't drive a parked car. We've heard that all the time. So you actually have to be doing something for that law of attraction to work for you. Yeah. So just always remember that the law of attraction only works for people with traction. I just used my car analogy Sunday saying the same thing to somebody. I was like, you got to think about this, this journey that you're on as a hill and you're going up that hill. Now you can do nothing and you're going to roll backwards. The right. very least you can do is put your foot on the brake, and then you're going to stay in the same place. But you're going to have to get them horses working in that engine at some point if you want to get up that hill. And right. for whatever reason, everything I was saying before that didn't make sense. But when I used that analogy, she was like, that makes a lot of sense. I was like, you don't even understand cars, but you get that? Okay, great. But that's, that's I, I like that traction thing, man. I do, because it's, it's, it's true. You, you got you to gotta lay some, some, some railroad. You got to have that railroad laid. Yeah, absolutely. So look, so you guys get what we're saying. So use this opportunity again with this whole COVID thing or whatever, and, to, and really sit there and ask yourself, you know, what is it that I'm willing to do to succeed? You know, first of all, what, what define what success is for you, mm. because it's different for everyone. Mm. All right. I had, all right. I was trying to stay off politics, but I learned a lesson from this. Oh, you know, so, you, you, you in the mud now, brother, you, you messed around man. and stepped in it. <laughs> you know what's so funny? I've been getting a bunch of, of, of DMs and stuff. And people are like, yo, man, 
kudos to you for doing that. I couldn't do that. Big ups to you. And out of every maybe 10 of those that I get, two of them probably listen to the thing. So I was like, what the heck? You're not even getting a point. But anyway, back to my point is I said, find out what success means for you. Because everything means different things to everyone. Mm-hmm. In my whole, in my, in, in podcast number 45, the Pro Trump Experience, the results, one of the things I said in there was, I said, after I dug through all of the simpleton talk, I found myself agreeing where Trump's head was at more often than not. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine hit me and she said, uh, this, what do you mean by simpleton talk? And she really got stuck on this. And she lives up in rural Michigan. And she really got stuck on that. I, she kept bringing it up in like four or five messages. I said, you're really stuck on this simpleton talk thing. And she said, well, I know you and I know you're not offensive. So I know you didn't mean it to offend anyone, but I'm offended. <laughs> she was like, because I like the way he talks. See, I relate to the way he talks. And mm-hmm. by you calling it simpleton talk, I'm taking it as I'm a simpleton since it relates mm-hmm. to me. I'm taking it as I must be some dummy or some idiot. To Does do the shoe fit in the Stop, stop. <laughs> I already don't like you. <laughs> but it's all good. We all. I'm a semi-public figure. I'm used to it. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> part of my <laughs> jobs. <laughs> but when she phrased it like that, she says, "I like it when he gets up there and he just leans on the podium, and he just uses basic phrases." But she goes, mm. "There are people in this country that relate to that. See that there are people in this country who actually." And I don't know if she's. I'm paraphrasing some of the stuff she said, but I know what she meant. She said, "There are people in the country who were." actually consciously or subconsciously they turn their ears off when you start using eloquent phrases and big words and there's some people that aren't hearing what you're saying he said there's Mm -hmm. a big swath i meant to say swath before and i use sloth in that other episode i've been wanting to correct that forever Mm -hmm. but there's a huge swath of america that appreciates just the broken down not simpleton but just simple speak Mm. And when she said that, I was like, you know what? I, I have to agree with you. I, I do said, too. Maybe, I said, maybe simpleton wasn't the right word. because I definitely No, didn't. no, 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 no. It was the right word. And I, I hate to cut in and say it. <clears throat> no, no, I'm no, just going to say it goes with my example perfectly. And she might hate this too, but that's cool. The English language is a very professional world. And I always tell, people always ask me sometimes, like, why do you fall back into using, you know, hood colloquialisms? Well, first of all, right. that's where I'm from. Just because I'm college educated and I work in media, I, some, I always say this. I say, just because Superman can fly doesn't mean that he doesn't walk. Now, I'm not saying I got a full mastery of the English language and the grammatical lexicon that we use. Sorry if those were too big of words for you. But every once in a while, I might want to dumb it down myself. So that goes to what I was saying. Because the English language is this, some people are okay just being able to talk guy or talk good, as we used to say. Yeah. And then some and she, people, she, she some people, yeah, some people actually appreciate the eloquence of the language. And um, she did. So and to her it. credit, she actually agrees with you on that too, because she said she even used Obama. She says I actually don't like hearing him speak. He sounds like this and that. He said his, he's so polished and this and that. And for some people like myself, I appreciate that. But she even said, "Would you call him simpleton if he was talking to some people and decided to use?" And she, she's so sweet. That she wanted, didn't want to offend me. <laughs> she goes, don't take this wrong. Don't take this wrong. But like if he was talked like urban or ghetto, I was like, that's what I said. I call it that. <laughs> but she said, if he went up there and said, you know, like homeboy or blah, blah, blah. She said, would you call him simpleton? And I told her, I was like, this is a very good point. I said, he's just relatable. And she, and she basically, she was like, that's my point. And, you know, I, I didn't close it out. And she agreed. I said, but as a president of the United States, you have to find a way to relate to everyone. Exactly. So everything you say can't be just simple. Right. And, but your point, everything you say can't be so, so linguistic. Can't be over too bourgeois. Everyone, over <laughs> everyone's head as well. <laughs> so we talked that. It was a beautiful moment. But again, Good. I, I, learned, I learned my moment on that. Uh, but my point when saying all of that was... My bad. No, it's, all, it it's my fault. I have to start learning my points again. But at the end of the day, we're talking about, oh, I was saying the levels of success. Uh-huh. So you had, so people define what their level of what's acceptable in the president is concerned, where he's concerned. Mm-hmm. And that's why we bump heads. But for you in your personal life, 
you have to find out, all right, what does success mean for me? Is it just being able to pay my bills and provide for my family? That's going to be different for someone that says, I want to pay my bill, provide for my family, buy a house for my mom, uh, take my community out of this. About, you see what I'm saying? So that's your yeah. first step is defining. And whatever that level of success is for you, then you have to look at what's involved. And for the person that just wants to provide for their family, that might not go further than a 40 hour a week job that pays. Yeah. All right. But for someone that wants to do above that, you're looking at now working 80 hours a week, hundred hours a week. You're looking at giving up. So first step as always is being accountable and being real with yourself. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, now you have to go in and seriously count the costs and lay out the consequences that are involved and stop kidding yourself. Cause we all walk around with these pipe dreams, but <laughs> Laying pipe is when they when they when they say it take all that it take all wait did you just do a laying no, pipe joke keep going did no, you did no, you do bro, did you you were you, doing so well but I'm gonna let you keep talking cloud he didn't hear that he didn't hear that he didn't hear that. wait but no my ears perked up did you mention uh, okay I won't do it now you're making it okay, I won't do it I, wait but no you you did it and my ears perked and I thought it was I thought you were calling out to me you got on me in the beginning because I was sitting back. And I didn't do the timing thing. So then my ears, I was like, wait, timing? And then you don't, you don't want me to? Okay, you know what? Maybe just me doing <laughs> this well, is enough. Now that, we, now that the freaking spotlight is just shining on the moments. Sometimes that's enough. I, let me clean up what I was going to say. I was going to say laying down the pipe and the groundwork is a, is a lot of work. That was our, what, and actually, the, the statement. It is, and it sometimes true. it requires you to sweat on her, and she doesn't like it when you sweat on her, uh, and that's a sacrifice that she's going to have to take if she wants the pipe to be laid, because it now takes... Now y'all see, who, see who's fault it is now, right? You can't blame me anymore. You can't be like, oh, Stone. No, 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 no. This is some old Johnny moment right there. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love you did that on purpose. You knew I couldn't I help myself. Not. I told, you, told you, I told you I was brain dead. My filter is not <laughs> on. You did that. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, but you know what, man? Let me tell you something. You should either feel good about yourself after our podcast or after some episodes. Maybe there's a baby coming in nine months. <laughs> Either way, we will take the credit. <laughs> Y'all y'all see my point, okay? Definitely you see, see my it. Point. Definitely see so the point. That's all we're trying to say, man. Just ask yourself, what am I willing to do to succeed? And understand that word do, there is, it's packed. It's packed with a lot of stuff. And we just want mm -hmm. you to be real with yourself about it. Yeah. That's all we do y'all today, man. We love y'all. <laughs> I think I need to take a nap at this point. <laughs> Check us out. Lifeonpodcast.com. You can actually send us emails, I believe, right there on the website. But if you want to go straight can. through, lifeonpodcast yep. at gmail.com. Uh, I'm going to do my name first this time. I'm just Johnny Vaughn, J-U-S-T-J-O-N-Y-V-A-N on all your social media platforms. Hit me up. I'll talk back to you. And then where you at, Stone? Yeah. Man, I, I don't want to get the O's and the zeros mixed up right yeah, now because I'm out of my yeah, mind right now. It's messed up. <laughs> I'm on Instagram. I'm at Stone007. That's Stone letter O, letter O7. And you also find me on Twitter at Stone007. And again, Life on Podcast, you have all our, our, our social media links are on there. And you, on, from that website, you can actually choose to listen from your favorite streaming platform. Right. So lifeonpodcast.com. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. As always, the biggest gift you can give to us to tell us that you like us is to tell a friend. And oh, I thought you were going to say click the like button and then tell a friend. But yes. <laughs> or click the like button. All that yeah. stuff. Do all, all that. All right, man. We, we out. We love y'all. Peace. <laughs>